Wi-Fi facilitates connections between all different sorts of devices for many different purposes. But can we really be sure that we can trust something that we can't even see? Yes. While many are afraid of Wi-Fi's invisibility, among other features, to a hacker, this picture is actually quite clear. And a hacker is able to use a number of techniques to break into a wireless network that might seem like magic to a layperson. We'll show you the top five ways that hackers will break into a network and how you can defend against it on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While the portrayal of hackers in media may make it seem like they have some sort of crazy skills impossible to defend yourself from, most of the attacks commonly used by hackers are relatively easy to protect oneself against even as a regular user. In fact, hackers aren't wizards, they're just people who have a little bit more technical information than the average user. There are even some hackers who have very little information more than the average user and rely on some pretty common exploits in order to get the job done. We're going to show you the most common exploits people use in order to break into Wi-Fi so you can better prepare to defend against them. The first method we're going to go over is by far the most obvious and the most common, and that's actually cracking the password. Now, there's a couple different type, types of flavors of Wi-Fi, and an open network uses no password whatsoever, a WEP network uses an insecure older method of encryption, and a WPA network actually has a shot, but can still be cracked after you capture a handshake and then compare it to a big list of other stolen or captured passwords. Now, in general, the best way to defend against this is, for one, make sure you're never using a WEP network. You can access your router and make sure to switch this because it shouldn't be <laughs> enabled by default on anything that's come out after about 2005. But if you do have something that's defaulting or if someone managed to switch it over, you can use something like Wiggle Wi-Fi on your cell phone to identify any networks nearby that might be using a WEP network so that you can connect and disable them. Although it's worth noting that on Mac OS systems, if you connect to a WEP network, it will actually warn you and tell you that the administrator needs to change it because it's insecure. Now, for cracking a password, you need to make sure that you pick something that you don't reuse and that is strong enough to stand up to a brute force attack. Now, the fact that anybody can grab a handshake and then go off and spend days or even weeks attempting to crack it against a list of passwords means you really need to take this seriously. So if you've picked a bad password for your Wi-Fi, you should reconsider and pick one that might be a little bit stronger, that a, a computer might have a harder time uh, kind of guessing against, rather than something like password123, pencil123, something like that, a longer phrase or even an acronym might be something that might seem random, but to you would have some sort of special meaning. The second type of attack we'll look at is a social engineering attack. A social engineering attack is one of the easiest attacks to take on a wireless network. It can require almost little to no technical knowledge, and in fact simply relies on user error. One such attack is simply asking for the password. It's not at all uncommon to give people a wireless network password, such as if they're a house guest or even a neighbor who happens to require internet access. However, keep in mind that when giving out these passwords, if that person is later compromised, the password may be disclosed to an attacker, or in some cases, if a person is sent by an attacker or even the attacker themselves request a password, it can be absolutely used to conduct other attacks on the network. So, always keep in mind who you give out network credentials to, and keep in mind that even if you trust the person, if something occurs to them, it may become an issue later for you. With this in mind, make sure to cycle your passwords and change them periodically, especially if you're going to give them out to different people. Another concern for network is actually accessing physical things connected to the network. This may be a router or a network infrastructure, or simply other devices. A common phrase in the security community is access is ownership. This means that physical access to devices which have privileges on a given network can effectively be used to persist in that network for an attacker. With this in mind, it's also good to monitor what devices are connected to your network at a given time. One tool to do so is Fing. I like Fing because it's an app that's available for pretty much any smartphone, and it's also available for Mac OS and PCs. What it does is give you visibility into your network, so you can see every device that's connected both by the name of the computer and by the manufacturer as derived by the MAC address. In addition, when you find that device, you can also scan it to see any ports that are open. So if you're looking at your router to assess how vulnerable it is, it's a great tool for that. Or if you just want to see if your neighbor from last week uh, who got your Wi-Fi uh, access 
code at the party is secretly connecting back to your network and using it to watch Netflix. That would be a great way to see if perhaps your neighbor's uh, Roku or Apple TV was suddenly connected to your network when you were only meaning to share it with them for you know a small evening event or something like that. The third attack we're gonna discuss completely bypasses the entire process of cracking the password. So what's better than cracking a password? Cracking a PIN number. That's right. In fact, most routers have a feature enabled that allows you to completely bypass the password, sometimes in a matter of seconds. Now this is possible because blah, 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 the router basically picks a really bad random seed, sometimes just zero. And because of this, a program called Ergetin or several other things called Bully or a Reaver can actually go through and crack this pin to get not only the password, but with the pin, you can go through and dump the password even if you change it a million times. So at that point, unless you can actually change the pin, which you kind of can't, you're not really able to do anything and the person will be permanently inside your router and able to con continue to get the password out of it no matter what they do. That's obviously a pretty big deal, so you should make sure to go into your router settings and disable WPS if it's enabled. Now, some older routers will say that they've disabled WPS, but they have not actually done so. So it's important for you to actually try this on your own router if you're serious about security. Make sure that it's not still uh, using WPS after you disable it, because if it is, you should actually replace the hardware because it will never actually be secure and it has a critical security vulnerability. Now, another hardware vulnerability you can run into is devices that are configured to create a hotspot, but are maybe not set up all the way. This can be a security camera, a printer, or anything else that's connected to a network, but maybe is insecure and has a portal that uh, an app or something can connect to. Now an example of this might be a doctor's office that installs a wireless camera and forgets that it's creating a hotspot where when you join it, you can just download the app that goes along with the camera and control it all remotely. Now, vulnerabilities like this can be discovered by using an app like Wiggle Wi-Fi to walk through a building or an area that you're looking to find devices and discovering any devices that are creating an open Wi-Fi hotspot or are otherwise connected to the network. Walking through an area, discovering these devices, then going back and, and fixing them can be the best way to discover devices you might not even know are projecting a Wi-Fi hotspot, which could be exposing your data. The fourth variety of attack we'll consider when looking at wireless security is an external one. This means that the threat exists outside of the local area of the network and generally is approached through the internet. This means that devices which form the network, such as routers or other network infrastructure, as well as Internet of Things devices may represent actual vulnerabilities to your security. Routers can be discovered online by scanning the internet using a tool like Shodan. Shodan is an Internet of Things search engine which indexes devices just based on IP addresses and allows one to actually seek and find different routers and things like that which are connected directly to the internet. Some of these routers may have remote administration enabled or poorly configured port forwarding rules and actually allow an attacker to directly log into the router with default credentials. The same goes for several Internet of Things devices. These devices may have known vulnerabilities or allow a user to log in and pivot throughout the network in order to find more information about it. After this information is gained, an attacker might use it to either exist on the network through the router or find it in a physical location using the previously mentioned tool Wiggle. Wiggle also allows users to look up networks by SSID. So if a network name is found through an attack through the internet, they may be able to correlate it to a real physical location of the same network. To prevent these sort of attacks, most of the configuration will be done through the actual devices connected. For Internet, for internet of Things devices, make sure that the firmware is up to date. Not all Internet of Things devices allow this, so if you can't, make sure to check for any vulnerabilities online. And if you can't update the device, remove it from your network and replace it with an updated version. For routers, you can access the router control panel. On Windows, you can type ipconfig slash all and look for the default gateway IP address. Or on macOS and Linux, you can type netstat dash rn, n-e-t-s-t-a-t space dash rn. Then look for the gateway IP address. You can open this IP address in your web browser just like any other configuration page or any other website. The IP address will go in the URL bar. It'll generally look something like 192.168.0.1 or .1.1. This page is generally straightforward, and while you may need to log into it, sometimes using the default credentials or ones which have been previously assigned, the menus are straightforward. You'll want to look for port forwarding, remote administration, and anything else which might ex expose the device to the internet, as well as making sure to update the firmware at the same time. The fifth and final kind of attack we'll discuss is a rogue access point. 
Now, a rogue access point is a wireless network that somebody's deliberately created in order to trick someone into either connecting and disclosing information while using the internet, or by thinking it's actually their network that's either rebooting or has some sort of issue going on and getting them to type in the Wi-Fi password to just completely bypass uh, password cracking entirely. Now, an example of this is the Ergeddon attack we performed in a previous tutorial that basically tricks people into thinking that a very similarly named wireless network is actually theirs by disconnecting them from their normal network and kind of forcing them to join this other network in order to get access back to their internet. This works because people get frustrated and they just enter their password in without thinking, hey, why is there suddenly a new network nearby? They just assume their router is doing something screwy, even though that's not a behavior their router should ever, ever, ever uh, exhibit. So if you're smart and you're able to start identifying the signs of something like this, you'll be on the lookout for phishing pages or suddenly losing access to a wireless network. Maybe you'll discover a Starbucks Wi-Fi network you're connected to when there's no Starbucks for a really long ways. Or you might just see someone like Ian sitting in your uh, coffee shop messing with your Wi-Fi. Now, all those are perfectly legitimate ways of spotting an attack in progress, but you can also use a VPN to reduce your risk and make sure that your traffic is encrypted so that even if someone starts messing with your wireless network, you'll still have the ability to keep your information safe because it's being tunneled to another location and the attacker would only be able to see just encrypted noise. With these different varieties of attacks in mind, remember that most of the precautions you can take to protect yourself involve making sure your devices are up to date, making sure that they're configured properly, as well as being careful of who you allow on your network and who you provide those credentials to. Or, if you're a real hacker, you can just launch a cyber nuke. I could launch a cyber nuke, but it'll completely fry his system. He's got a backup system at home. Is that a go for launch? Yes. No, 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 oh! What just happened? Armageddon, I'm afraid. Just kidding. Those are expensive. Thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Cyber Weapons Lab.